Hey guys, sorry about that, no sound. Yeah. Hey Beadlocks, hey Anarchy, thanks for telling me there's no sound. We have sound. You should be able to hear me now. Facts as well, yeah. Can you hear me? This is where no one responds and I just assume that you can hear me. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's fine now. Yeah. <clears throat> the joys of having one set up between me and Brian means that I have to change all his stuff and he has to change all my stuff when we uh, when we come to do these streams. Nearly ruined it. Ah, we get there. We get there. I'm just going to take it nice and slow and steady tonight. Just going to give everyone a few minutes to join. There's no no waiting screens like I used to use on my streams back then. Um. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So we're waiting. This is the uh, Noxry T60 as it's currently built. Um, this actually has a 5mm polycarbonate plate in, but we'll come on to that in a little bit. Um, but as you can see, the board's quite nice. But we'll talk about it in a little bit. And we're going to be building it today with the HS60 V2. So this is the ISO version. As you all know, I love me a bit of ISO. And we'll talk that through in a little bit as well. Yeah, that's us a kit. <clears throat> Hopefully the bottle ping soon and notify everyone. See what's happening in the chat. Nothing. Still no bot. Stocks. Good meme. Yeah, it's a good meme. They're all good memes, man. Um, I'm not sure which is the best meme. Whether it's the uh, the T60 or whether it's HS Fix 60 B2. Is it RGB or is it flexi cases when I'm bouncing in the middle? I don't know. <clears throat> oh, there we go. The box pinged. Hopefully, uh, that'll uh, <laughs> get some people in. I uh, got Mr. Evil Genius himself. Hey, man. Good to see you. And Pusher as well. Well, hello there. We need. Uh, why doesn't Discord support GIFs? That'd be cool. Uh, not GIF Discord. Twitch. If Twitch supported GIFs, that'd be really good. That'd be really good. Uh, we've got Anorak in as well, an XPO Page 22. I don't know how to pronounce it, here, man, but hey, good to see you. <laughs> we've got Geo and uh, 159 as well. Hey guys, good to see you guys. Uh, what we're building today, we're going to be building the HS60 uh, V2, which is a PCB, into the Noxry T60 case. Um, so we'll be talking through that in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to give people a chance to get on. Oh, it's Natty. Hello. How are you doing? I didn't reckon, I didn't click with the username, but there we go. Um, what else is going on? I'm just going to change my setup a little bit. Uh, even Quay would struggle making this build together in, <laughs> in an hour. Well, we're actually going to build it twice because um, what I want to do is 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 show how easy it is to change switches in one of these as well. Um, once we've uh, once we've got going, uh, so we're actually going to build it twice. We're going to build it with uh, Helios and talk about lubed Helios and how they feel, which are actually going to end up in the Zephyr in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and we're also going to have a look at Arctos switches uh, too. So we're going to build it with Arctos switches first, I think. Uh, these are tactile pre-looped switches, so I haven't touched these or edited them in any way. So we'll talk about those, and we'll see which feels best, and give a bit of a comparison, uh, and we'll talk about the case as well. Jay, you're going to miss number one. Uh, yeah, but I've got dips on yours, man, so... You know, I'm I'm quite comfortable with that. I'm I'm probably not going to get it, so we'll we'll see how it goes. And we've got Pingo as well. Hey man, good to see you. Uh, how's my uh, secret little board coming along? Uh, yes, yeah, stocks. To put it simply, how easy is it to push switches into a thing designed to have switches pushed into it? Um, for some people, if you go back and watch my old stream with Mel on it, she really struggled to do this. So we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay, the bot's pinged anyway, so we'll, we'll make a proper start and we'll talk about what we're going to build today and uh, and what it's going to look like when we're done. Um, so to start with, this is the board. This is the Noxery uh, T60. Uh, <laughs> oh, Chester, and who is this handsome devil? Well, hello, sir. Um, <laughs> stocks, it's not you. <laughs> Um, so this is the Noxery T60. I managed to pick this up just before Christmas from Zondat directly. Uh, we went out for a nice coffee. You might have seen the pictures on Instagram. Um, 
but this is the T60, and this is his build that he had in it that he gave to me, uh, apart from the caps, because the caps are mine. But uh, effectively, what we've got in here at the moment, and we'll take it out and have a look shortly, is a 5mm polycarb plate on a standard 60% PCB with uh, cherry retail blacks that haven't been lubed or changed or tweaked in any way, shape, or form. Um, the T60 itself is just a simple tray mount case and instead of having all of the uh, the tray mounts you have one here and one there and you have the same at the other side and one in the middle and one down by space and all over the place this only has four mounting points in the tray so it has two here and then it has two there and that's it that's all it has just four mounting points four zero mounting points uh, no, not four zero zero four mounting points just four mounting points and the idea is that in the center of the board what happens is the pcb runs along here and as you type because you've only got four supports it will actually flex um like so inside the case as you type in um i'll be honest the five millimeter uh, polycarb probably removes a lot of that flex in the case uh, but it does sound quite nice now the switches themselves don't sound brilliant because they aren't lubed they're just standard stock switches which is how Zondon likes them um, it's not for me uh, but it is you know it, it's what he likes that's fine um, I am tempted to desolder it and rebuild it and give it another try but we'll see how we go with that uh, currently she's wearing GMK Sky Dutch and it actually has uh, row zero bottom row so it's got the really angled bottom row so you can probably see that on the sculpt and the keycaps. Might be easier to show you this way actually. Uh, no, it's definitely easy that way. So you can see here that the sculpt on the bottom row is quite significantly more angled than what it would be with standard GMK keycaps. Uh, the board itself only has a really shallow angle, I think it's 7 degrees if, uh, if what Zondat told me is correct. Um, but the case is really simple, no design affectations at all, just a nice, simple 60% board. Oops. <coughs> um, let's just catch up with chat and see what you guys are talking about. Uh, sometimes the things designed to push things in to turn out to be a bit narrow. That's true, they do. Sometimes the, uh, the switches on a hot swap board are quite difficult to push in and out, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, Jay with the HS60, uh, yes this is the HS60 V2, they are about to ship from the group buy, this is the ISO version, the ANSI version and the HHKB version are out separately, uh, they will be with the retailers and vendors that are sending them on in the next couple of days um, from what I understand, I think Mechboards already have there so if you've ordered from Mechboards you'll get it soon, if you've ordered it from whoever the US vendor is, I can't remember off the top of my head, then I'm pretty sure they're on the way there as well, so yeah. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build uh, this board here. Uh, so it does have in-switch uh, RGB LEDs, uh, and it also has, uh, so it's, it's per-key RGB effectively. Um, it also has hot swap connectors on all of the switches, so it's a single layout. This is the only layout this board supports. Um, and as you can see, it's got the KL hot swap connectors for all of the keys. Now, one of the interesting things about this, and the camera's probably not going to focus on this, um, but this particular chip here if i get it the right way up let's see if we can focus on here uh, if it's going to focus oh okay it's not going to focus but it's the uh, it's an arm stm32 so it's one of the first arm boards that we've had on top clack as far as i'm aware um which is quite interesting to to know uh let's just catch up with chat i think there's been a couple of questions um you yeah, have got loon six uh loon six the third hey man Get some lube for easy pushing. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Stocks, you're not having my Sky Dolls set up. Zonda, please lube your switches. Well, we'll come on to the sound test in a minute and you can see what you think there. <laughs> Kelly's there as well. Uh, hey man, good to see you, dude. Um, they'll get smooth eventually. Yep, yeah, true. He might be just breaking them in before he lubes on, I'm not sure. Uh, hi, Andy. Yeah, we've got Andy Holland in as well. Hey man. Uh, it's a good meme. Uh, Gio says, is there breakout pins on the back for LED strips? There isn't as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm having a look now. No, the answer is there's no breakout pins uh, that can be used for LEDs on the back of the board. So it doesn't have underglow, it just has in-switch RGB. Um, if the PCB flexes too much, how does a kale socket hold up is my question. Uh, that's a good point and it's one of the things we're going to try out in this board over a little bit of time. Uh, to be honest, I suspect they'll be quite 
okay. Uh, PCBs are designed to be quite flexible. I don't think it's going to affect the kale sockets, the flexes in the PCB in between the gaps rather than actually through the connectors. Uh, and you're only talking two or three millimeters. So that's that's twice as much flex as what it would ever get in a in inside a case. So I think we'll be fine. Uh, no built-in underglow, no, too much power. Yeah, that's ab absolutely true. Uh, if it moves to USB-C for the next round, it may have enough power. Uh, Yankai has not decided that, and neither has Mechboards, who is the vendor that is running these. Uh, the RGB is individually controllable. Now, one of the interesting things about this board is, like uh, the uh, the Vern, this is actually uh, VIA compatible, VIA compatible. Um, so we might have a look at that later on in the stream if we get to it. Given it's a standard layout, I'm probably not going to need to program it, but it is fully VIA compatible and we, we might take a look. Um, <laughs> oh, and Chris Wires just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that, man. Nine time you've resubbed. Well done, dude. Well done. Appreciate it, man. Uh, does it have a standard bottom row? There were two models offered as Geo uh, saying uh, you could have the Wing Keyless and the HHKB7U model and standard answer. Yes, that's very true. Uh, this is the ISO version, which is uh, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 6.25, and then 4 1.25s to finish off with. This is the just the ISO version. And uh, Andy Holland with the uh, the Twitch Prime subscription as well. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. I appreciate that. Uh, the RGB is individually controllable. Yes, you can uh, control it individually if you stick with um, QMK. If you use VIA, you have to use Wilbur's implementation of RGB, which I haven't had much of a chance to play around with yet, but I do know it's slightly different, so we'll, uh, we might have a look at that later on on stream. If not, then I'll, I'll be able to answer any questions off stream you might have about that. Uh, <laughs> Andy about his prime sub. Yeah! Um, and we've got uh, Tidal as well. Hey Tidal, good to see you, man. Uh, and Pusher's donated 100 bits. Oh, thanks, Pusher. I appreciate that. I appreciate those bits. Thank you. Uh, and Chesteroni as well with a tier one sub. Uh, oh, Chesteroni, uh, subscribe for two months in a row. Thank you very much, dude. Really appreciate that. Um, Dinkston's waving as well. Hey, man, hot swap boards should be the norm. I think hot swap boards have their place. Um, I think they're really good for people who want to try loads of different switches. Um, it's going to be really useful for me because I get switches all the time to try out on stream and this will probably be featured quite a lot when I rebuild uh, this board with new switches. Um, I think a lot of people can be quite indecisive and it's good for those. Um, it, it just depends on the use case. For, for most boards I would prefer to solder them. If I'm going to use it as a daily driver, I'm confident in the switch choice, then I would rather solder it than, uh, um, than use a hot swap board. But they do have their uses and I can completely see why the, uh, the community is um, taking them on board quite successfully and, and liking them. So yeah. Uh, we've just had a failed cheer of about 30 bits from Chris, but he didn't do it properly. So thanks Chris for the attempt. We appreciate that, man. Um, <laughs> GS call them a noob, yeah, pretty much. And uh, hot swaps are great breaking boards. Yeah, that's true as well. So if I'd got some retool blacks I wanted to break in before I loop them, uh, before I put them in a proper build, this would be ideal. Pop them in here, off we go. There we go, break them in. Um, so anyway, it's moving back to the board. So this is, as I say, built with a five millimeter polycarb plate. And we'll take it apart in a few minutes and we'll have a look at that. But what I wanted to do for you guys is just put the music on pause for a second and uh, show you what the board sounds like. Um, so I've got this nice and close to the, uh, the microphone. Uh, so you'll have to excuse my four finger space master race. I do type with my four finger on space. So I apologize for that uh, in advance, but you're gonna have to cope with that, I'm afraid. Um, the board's got retail blacks, uh, GMK screw and stabilizers, which have been lubed on that lubed them. Um, five millimeter plate, uh, which is made from polycarbonate. Um, so yeah, so let's try it out and see what you think. So there we go. Yeah, ignore my typing. Listen to the sound, guys. Ignore my typing. I, I am trying to use the Alice to teach myself to touch type, but when I need to go fast, uh, it's easier to do it this way. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, you can laugh, guys. Look at the hand movement. Uh, wait, so you don't use your thumbs at all? Um, uh, no, I don't use my thumbs, and there's a reason for that. When I learned to type, it was on a laptop, uh, an IBM ThinkPad, and because of the way the keyboard was laid out, it was like this, and you had the trackpad beneath, the, the natural position for me was to use this finger, this thumb for the trackpad, type with my fingers, and you can see I'm reaching down like that, and then use this thumb for the mouse buttons, left and right click, and that's kind of how I learned how to type, and I've not been able to force myself back to, to typing in this format as yet. Um, I am using my Alice and my VEA, which you can see just up on the shelves here, uh, to try and teach myself to type properly, but it's a slow process, and every time I go to work and I pick the laptop up, I end up going back and uh, falling back into type uh, and, and to type in this way. So it is something I'm working on, and I'm hopeful that uh, over the course of the coming months, you guys on Top Clack will see me uh, improve on my typing. Um, so take the piss all you want, take the mickey, I don't mind. Uh, it's just one of those things uh, that I have to get used to. Uh, Wolf 59 says it's like dancing, or as someone else described it, it's like a spider uh, cocking up, making a web. Um, there you go. Or the postman playing with a ball of sellotape, someone else said it was like that. So yeah, think about that. Uh, Dixit, yeah, there's a lot of movement, and this is why the VEA is good actually, and you know I got the VEA from you, uh, because it forces my hands to be in st uh, static positions, and I try to put the boards as far apart as possible to try and force that, so there we go. Um, Anyway, if we go back, uh, in terms of the sound, it does sound quite nice. It sounds quite high pitched for a retail black, in my opinion, and I think that's just because of the case design. It's a solid piece case, it's not a two piece design, so you do get the whole reverberation through. It's only mounted on two points, which means that the board flexes, and as the board flexes, you hear more and more, a little bit more ping. Um, that all comes from the switches, uh, there's none of that from the board itself, so we should see a difference when we change it over. Uh, just catch up on uh, chat. I'm still putting news as a hobby, but that has uh, something with the right kind of sound that I want. Uh, millionaire, yes, sound is very important to me as well, so we'll talk about how to improve sound later on. Uh, type on that Noxery tonight. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> it's like the Sean Marion of typing. Um, I assume that's an American sports person, Dixie. But I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. Uh, it's an elaborate excuse you've created. It's the truth, Stocks. It's the truth. Um, no one cares, really. It doesn't really matter. You can all take the, take the piss. Uh, uh, Cameron says he likes the clacking. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, do you like the layout of the Alice or the VEA better in terms of ergonomics? Uh, honestly, I prefer the VEA because I can split the board as much and I can angle them and it's tented so it goes up and down that way as well. So I have much more range of movement and I can make it much more comfortable for myself. But it's not as usable on a desk when you've got 10 things going on and notepad and things like that as well. So I can't really use it for work. Um, I do use the Alice for work occasionally um, and that works quite well um, because it's just a single candy bar just with an angle. Um, but it does again force me to have my hands separate and force me to use my hands in the right way. So both are good as learning as typing aids. In terms of which is truly ergonomic, I think the VEA is better um, purely because you can move around, you can spread as far apart as you want, you can tilt, twist and tent uh, and that just adds more ergonomic options. Uh, it seems like that trips ruin many of typists, uh, but hey, if it works, it works. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. So uh, Chris Wise is the same, Word and is the same. There's a few other people. We all type the same, and it's broadly for a similar reason. Uh, we're all of a certain age where those um, laptops, think pads, and things were of the main use case. Uh, in an office environment, we're all in our early 30s. It kind of just happens. It's just one of those things. Um, I will fix it, uh, and we will talk about it in stream in a couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll have fixed it. Uh, the clacking is very nice. Yep. Uh, he likes to wave at his keyboard when he leaves him alone. <laughs> uh, is that the Noctory T60? Uh, it is the T60, yes, and this is the burn at the side of it that we built last week. Uh, Kelly's saying, Holy, uh, uh, sorry, Holy Panda's not great. Kelly is saying, Jay, Sean Marion is a basketball player who has crooked ass fingers from playing. His pinkies practically sideways after the first joint. Ah, I see. That makes a lot more sense now. Uh, and Pluto, thank you very much for the subman. Really appreciate that, dude. Uh, oh, my wife needs to give me a second. Oh, she wanted to come in. Oh, the dog wanted to come in. Hello. Come here. Do you want to say hello? Is that where it is? Here we go. The doggo wants to say hello. There you go, chicken. There you go. <laughs> go on. Uh, so yes, yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, I did wonder how much case and switches as well as desk mat affects the sound of a keyboard. Ideally, I'd like something like the sound of a HKHKB. Okay, so... Um, in terms of sound effects, you've got the switch, you've got the plate material, you've got the case material, you've got the keycaps, you've got the desk material, and you've got any other 
uh, changes that you can put in there. So you could put uh, sound deadening inside the case, you could have it on a mat, or you could have it straight on the board, you could have rubber bump ons on the bottom like we have on most keyboards. So the six things that could affect sound. Okay, switches are probably one of the least ones, unless you're going tactile, so it's something we can talk about later, and I'm probably going to do a stream on sound build at some point, um, and we might even see if we can get Chris Wise to join us for that, because he's very into his sound. Just realise the music stops about the music on. Um, so yeah, um, we'll talk about sound at some other point. Uh, Millionaire, if you want to hit me up on Top Clack Discord, I'm more than happy to talk about it any time as long as I'm awake. I'm assuming you're in the US, so it's probably your lunchtime. Uh, it's my night time at the moment, so... Uh, 159 says, Jay is too old to learn new tricks. Uh, let's move on to the build stream, absolutely. <laughs> Doggo appearance, yeah, there we go, that's my dog. Uh, oh, we've got Soren as well. Hi Soren, good to see you. Uh, would love to have C64 for the colleague at work, that way they would ditch Notepad plus an Emacs for Vim. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so in terms of the board, that's how it sounds today. What we're going to do now is we're just going to take that apart. I have got a switch puller at somewhere. Um, and as you'll see, it has only got the four mount points. Apologies if you can hear my dog in the background. There we go. So as you can see, there's just four mount points in this case. You've got one just here, you've got one there, and then the same at the other side, you've got one here and one here. Um, and those are the only mount points that hold the player and PCB in place on this board. Um, I'll try and show you the flex. It, it's difficult with this one um, because it, it's such a thick player, but I don't know if you, it's not gonna show it. You, you can see a little bit. Can you see the keycaps moving up and down there? Let's try and get a bit closer. There is some slight movement, but it's hard to show you. Um, anyway, there we go. Uh, I'm not a programmer. No, I'm a programmer's worst nightmare. I'm a product owner for a large financial institution, stroke program manager. So yeah. Um, so that's the four mount points that we've got in here. I'm just going to remove these screws now. And then we'll show you how the five millimeter plate works. Okay, so as you can see, that's that. I'm just gonna pop these here so we don't lose them. So let's sort of look at the case first. So this is the internals of the case. You can see it's got the Noxry logo in the center, a bit of dirt in there, uh, and just the four singular mount points, that's it. A nice uh, grooved cutout for the USB port, supports USB-C and uh, standard uh, USB mini as well. So there we go. There we go. Nice and simple. And here's the build that uh, I've been using that came directly from Zonda. So as you can see, it's got a nice, a thick five millimeter plate. Uh, it does have some flex in it still, uh, but probably not as much as it would do if it was a plateless build or just a 1.5 mil alu build. It does feel very similar to aluminium uh, when you're typing on it, but it sounds very different. Um, it does sit nicely to the PCB uh, and it has got uh, grooves in the bottom to accommodate the stabilizers as well, which is difficult to show you on stream, but you can take my word that there. So there we go. Uh, in terms of the bottom, uh, Zonda did tell me it got a little bit of card just to uh, to block off the screw and stabilizer there. So just little build things. So there we go. So that's how Zonda has had built this board. Um, that's how it sounded before. And what we're gonna do now is move on to our build for today. Um, okay, let's just have a look and see what's going on. Skitter, skitter goes a dog out. Yeah, might get a HS60 soon. Zemus, you should definitely get a HS60 as we're going to talk. They are very, very good. Um, we'll talk about this before we do the build uh, in terms of the keyboard, and I'll show you how it works from a lighting perspective as well, although it does ruin my camera, so the camera will go fuzzy for a second, but you'll at least be able to see the colours. Um, if only it wasn't basically flat, fuck less than 8 degrees. Excuse my French. Uh, sorry, I was just reading it out as it came. Um, I think this is... Uh, six or seven, I think, if I remember from what was on that said. It's not a particularly high board. It's uh, quite a shallow angle. Um, it's about the same as the Vern, uh, give or take. So, yeah. 
Um, so in terms of uh, this board, this is the HS60 V2. So as we talked about before, this is an in-switch RGB board uh, that runs on an ARM processor. It's still QMK compatible, but it's also VIA compatible as well, uh, which means you don't have to flash it to update the firmware. You can just connect it to VIA and update it on the fly. There's no underglow, but it is hot swap. Um, so all of the keys do swap independently um, and you can just pop the switches in and out as you need to. Um, so yeah, that's about it. It's a simple board. This particular variant is the ISO variant. Um, it only supports a single layout. It doesn't support multiple layouts. It has got two switches reversed from a US uh, from a, an RGB perspective here in the top corner, uh, and that's because of the USB port underneath taking up the room that's needed for the hot swap connectors. Uh, but other than that, they're all south-facing LEDs. So there we go. Uh, carbon fiber half plate and uh, alu half plate which would you get uh, so I've actually ordered a, a carbon fiber half plate for my KBD67 so I'm interested to try that I do like carbon fiber plates I've got one in my E6 I think they sound fantastic um, but I haven't tried a half one as yet so I can only recommend what I've tried and if I was going to pick between the two it'd be a carbon fiber full plate um, if I had to pick between half plates given the fact that I've only tried an alu one I haven't tried a carbon fiber one I'd probably err on that side at the moment Ask me again in a couple of weeks, I might change my mind. Um, so there we go, guys. That's the, uh, the H60 V2 PCB uh, made by Mechboards, uh, or uh, well, funded by Mechboards, uh, grouped by, run by them, designed and built by Yankar um, uh, Direct, um, and it's a H60 V2. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build this up for the first time with Arctos switches. Um, we're going to put some stabilizers in there, and we're going to build the, the board up. Once we've put the Arctos switches in, we'll rebuild it, we'll test it, we'll see how the flex feels, we'll see how the switches feel and sound. Uh, once we've done that, we'll take it apart and then we'll build it with Helios. Um, and we'll see how they go. Um, and then I'm gonna break these in for a week and then they're gonna go in the Zephyr when I do my next build stream. So in terms of the stabilizers for this board, we only need ones for the backspace, which can't be split, it's just a sole to you backspace. We need one for the ISO enter, um, as per usual, for ISO uh, standard key fitment um, and then additionally we need one for the spacebar which is 6.25u on this board so in terms of these stabilizers i'll be using gmk screw-in stabilizers these were provided by fax uh, fax 360 i think he's still watching so thank you fax uh, for providing these uh, if you're in the eu or worldwide he has great prices on stabilizers um, and yeah gmk uh, screw-in uh, Jim K clipping, uh, sorry, chip cherry clipping, and he also does uh, the plate mounted ones as well. Uh, can you compare the KBD67 versus the Noxry 268M? So actually I did that. If you go back onto my old streams on my channel, uh, which is Jay Keeps, uh, I actually did a comparison on the giveaway stream for the KBD67, where I had both the KBD67 and the uh, uh, the Noxry 268 together. Uh, my Noxry 268 is just on the shelf, just here, that board there. Um, and uh, I did a complete comparison between them. They're very similar in terms of design. The mount, is, mount style is different, uh, but other than that, we'll get there. Uh, and that'll show you a good comparison of the two. Uh, when I get my new one through as well, which will be USB-C, we'll do another comparison and we'll see if there's any differences, changes, tweaks, or otherwise. Uh, so the notification on Discord came straight over. Can't wait for the H60 to chip out. Yes, that's right, the great boards, absolutely fantastic boards. Uh, what did you use to lube your Helios? These are already lubed, um, so I know I said I'd break them in, but I just want to use them and get used to using a silent switch more than break them in. It's more break myself into using them than break these switches in. Uh, these were lubed with Crytox 106 uh, on the spring and Crytox 104 on the housings. Um, so yeah, so we'll talk about those when we do the build. Uh, in terms of the board, I'm just going to show you it plugged in first. Now, do be warned that this does... Uh, uh, annoy this camera here that gives you the vertical view. Uh, it doesn't like the RGBs, but I'll show you. So there you go. That's a standard lighting mode, and you can change it between others once you've got keycaps on as well. You can hear my computer in the background just install the drivers for it. Just unplug that. <coughs> there we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is clip and lube some stabilizers. Uh, Stocks is going to tell you I'm doing this wrong, but at the end of the day, it's all preference. And if you guys like your way of doing stabilizers, you don't have to do it the same way as me. Uh, that's entirely your choice. Um, in terms of tools, we just need some flush cutters. Nice, simple little tool. 
And in terms of the stabilizers, they're made of, of uh, three parts. Effectively, you've got a housing, you've got uh, an insert, and then you've got a wire as well. Uh, and you have uh, one of each of these sets at both sides of the stabilizer. Uh, in terms of how these fit together, the, uh, the insert has four legs on it on the bottom. I'm going to see if we can get this to focus. There you go, we've got four legs on the bottom. We're going to clip two of those legs off, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. On one side you've got two holes, that's the front of the stabilizer, which is where the wire clips, and then on the rear you've just got a single hole, so that shows you how to put them together. Oops. In terms of the housing, uh, these are screw-in stabilizers, you've got two sides. You've got the uh, screw-in side, which is this side, uh, and then you've got the clip-in side, which is just on this side here. Turn it over, you can see that the screw comes through the PCB into the stabilizer here, and this is where the wire clips in. And if I show you on the side view, you'll be able to see do it this way. You will see that just here is where the wire clips in through that. In terms of how it all fits together, the insert with the two prong, the two holes on the front, goes to the front where the wire clips in. They go together like so, and then you insert your wire into the front and then clip it into the front clipping system. Before we do that, what we're going to do is we are going to clip the uh, the, the legs off of this. Uh, there's four legs on it. I hope that's clear enough for you to see. It might be easier if I show it here. That's going to focus. There you go, four legs. What we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom left and the top right legs off of that. Um, and we're going to clip them flush and even across the base. The first thing we're going to do is take this leg here, nice and easy clipped, spin it around, do the one that's diametrically opposed to it. And then if we look again, you can see now we've only got two legs on there. I'm trying to get you in a flight to see. And then a focus, I don't think it's going to have it. There you go. Once we've done that, we put the insert inside the housing, take the stabilizer wire, push it into the bottom of the two holes that we mentioned before. If it goes in, and then clip into the front of the housing, and then you can see that the stabilizer moves up and down as needed when twisted. I'm just going to replicate that for the rest of the stabilizers whilst I catch up with chats and see where we're up to. Okay, damn dude, check out that solid cable. Uh, yeah, that was made by Max from Cable Car Designs. Uh, it's a great bit of kit. He's actually remaking me one. Um, and the remade one, what that will do is it will have uh, interchangeable. So this has actually got um, a Limo connector in it. I can't really show you, it's just there, which is a nice hot swap connector. Um, what he's going to do is he's going to do a revised version which has the coil but then it has the Limo connectors here and then he's going to do me two ends so I can switch between USB-C uh, and uh, USB mini. So if anyone does want a cable check out uh, uh, Cable Car Designs. Yeah. Max is going to have so many orders. Yeah, Cable Car Designs, Max, he's a great guy, uh, he's one of my good friends in this community uh, and I think he's fantastic. He's also the guy that ran the ANSI group buy. Uh, and he's got a couple of other group buys coming soon as well. Uh, we'll get to the uh, the lubing of them in just a second, Andy. We'll we'll cover the lube on these once we've clipped them all. <coughs> uh, when he's going to max? When is Max going to make you that cable again? He should be making it this weekend. He said he said he would make it this weekend and post it. So we will see. Um, but yes, the uh, Pluto. Yes, the Lemo connector is going to be closer to the base on this on this revision. For those of you who are interested in the clipping of the stabilizers, I will be doing a, a really in-depth video at some point soon with um, with some really up close closer pictures uh, and and some proper macro shots to show you exactly how to clip them as well. <coughs> uh, top, he should be posting it early this week as he's sending with something he's proxying from the Netherlands for me for me to send on to you. Oh right, okay, so he's going to send my cable to you and you're going to send it to me. Cool, yeah, makes sense. So I'm just going to open my drink, a little bit warm in here with all the studio lights. Okay, so that's all of our stabilizers clipped. What we're going to do now is insert them into the housings and build the stabilizers up. So as I say, on the insert you want the two, uh, two hold sides to the front. Uh, you want to put that to the side where the wire clips into the housing. 
push the wire into the bottom hole, clip it into the housing, and there we go. I'm going to just replicate that for the two U ones as well, and then we'll move on to lubing them. these together as quickly as we can and then we'll cover how to lube them. It's easier to lube these ones built um, so which is it's easier to take apart and lube. Uh, I find these much easier to lube once they're put together um, purely because then you can attack the points that may or may not rub. But as I said there's lots of different ways of doing this and there's no right or wrong way. Faster Jay, faster. Okay, okay, I'm going man, I'm going. Uh, Jay, what gear do you t uh, do you use to desolder through hole connectors? Um, I've got a proper desoldering station. Uh, I'll probably show it on stream at some point. Um, it's the Hacker FR something or other. Um, I use that for pretty much all desoldering. It works just fine. Andy loves lubing things up. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. So it would appear I've only got five screws for my screw and stabilizers. I'll have to find another one out. Uh, of the drawer, just give me one second. This is where I've got packs and packs of stabilizers, some clipping, some screwing. In fact, we'll use those because they're the Torx ones, so we'll just use those. <clears throat> In fact, oh, there you go. Uh, Cable Car Designs, that's Max's uh, website. Cable Car Designs, there you go. Okay, so what we're going to do now, as I said, is we're going to lube these stabilizers. So we've got three different stabilizers to pop in. Uh, I use uh, silicone grease. Uh, this is dielectric grease. It's designed for use on circuit boards, car parts, all that kind of stuff. But it's perfect for stabilizers. Um, and he's saying his space bustle isn't right. Well, we'll show you this and we'll see. Um, uh, see see how uh, socks is. Uh, thanks to the missing screw, it's me. I remember dropping it on the floor when I was setting up for a stream earlier on today. Don't worry about it, it's mine, it's not your fault. Um, but I have got the hex key ones to, to use as well, so we'll, we'll just go with those. Um, so I ran posting the link for Cable Card Designs, thank you very much. I used one of those hacker desoldering guns at my mates yesterday, and it was great. Uh, having a difficult time just to find the price to myself. I desolder a board every week, so it makes sense to me, but yeah. <laughs> we'll kick quality controls ass. It's not quality control, it's me, don't worry about it, man. Uh, there we go. Uh, any non group buy in stock 60% that aren't tray mount? I can't think of any. 60%, um, I can't think of one either. Uh, the duck side, no, the duck side winders tray mount. I can't think of one title, not off the top of my head. I think the only ones that I know of are group buy only. Um, I think you can hear my, uh, my dog in the background snorting at the door as well. <coughs> Okay, so we're just going to lube these stabilizers. So as I say, I use silicon grease, which is dielectric grease, designed for car parts, available at all good or a parts store. I put a small amount in the lid. I then take a paintbrush, which I use for all my stabilizers. Uh, so this is what I use every time. It's just a really fine paintbrush. We take the stabilizer and the lube. You want just a small amount of lube on the brush, not much at all. What we're going to do is put on this side, we're just going to put a thin layer of lube, just on there. We're then going to turn it over, put a thin layer of lube on the other side. If you can see that, there you go, just a really thin layer. We're then going to take a small blob, just on the edge of the brush so you can see it glisten. We're going to go into the back where you can see the wire. Whatever's left on the brush at this point, we're going to give a really good nice cut just around the edge where the wire clips in and then finally we're going to turn it over and put a rice piece size on the bottom and just layer it across the bottom there. Now there's multiple ways to do this, some people agree with me, some people don't, some people like to do it slightly differently um, there's no right or wrong way, if you like the way you do them that's all that matters um, so try this way if you want, try a different way, uh, watch Nathan Kim videos, he does it slightly differently. Find what works best for you uh, and then try that out. 
This is the way I like to do it. Just as Bob Ross would say, there's no accidents, just uh, happy little incidents. And there we go, that's one stabilizer done. I'm going to pop that straight onto the board. Uh, so, this is the uh, space bar. That clips in just like so. And then, I'm going to move on. Um, let's see what else is being talked about in here. Uh, XD864 is out of stock but will be restocked soon. Also, don't recommend it. Uh, is Trayman Pokestar Mountain? Yes, that's Trayman style. Uh, I'll be done by stabs in 20 minutes, sorry, and yes, absolutely. Don't mention mountain types. Yeah, there's a bit of consternation going on in the community a little bit about mountain types at the minute. Um, I'm of the view that Gasket, which you've uh, referred to, uh, uh, that hand thing, is slightly different to what everyone else thinks. I think there's more than one way of having a Gasket, um, and there's different terms for both of those. I don't think Gasket is necessarily the right... Uh, terminology for how we use uh, bits of rubber in the community because um, we're not creating seals around anything which is what gaskets primarily used for um, but in terms of that I think there's dis dis there's different ways you can mount gaskets uh, or mount boards on gaskets that provide different qualities and, and uh, different experiences and we should rename the mounts based on the experiences they give not give a catch-all term for all different types of, uh, of gasket mount uh, but that's something we're going to de discuss on a stream at some point soon. We're going to get a couple of designers together uh, and have a good discussion on the 24-hour stream about that, I think. Okay. Uh, top mount, you have two-piece key. Uh, yeah, describing mount styles. Yeah, top mount, bottom mount, sandwich mount, tray mount, multiple types of gasket mount. Uh, so these are going to go into the backspace. And then we're going to do the final ones, which will be for the ISO Enter. Okay. Okay, we'll just finish this one up and then we'll catch up with the chat, see what you guys are talking about. Uh, and then we'll carry on with the build. So as I said, this is the last one that we need to put together. And this is going to be for the ISO Enter. Let's try and help it, you guys see. There we go. Okay. So that's the lubing of the stabilizers done. Move that to one side. Um, the stabilizers are all in place now on the PCB. What we need to do next is just screw those in. So for that, we're going to turn this upside down. We're going to take our screws. Uh, flex mount. I'm not sure flex mount is the right way because there's multiple different ways of doing it. That hand thing. You can do it for flex, or you can uh, do it for sound improvements and there's multiple reasons to do it. Some gasket mounts won't introduce additional flex. I'm going to see if I've got the right sized adapter on here for it. I do. So we're just going to screw these stabilizers in. These are um, hex mount sockets, uh, sorry hex mount screws for these stabilizers. One of Fax's new products better than uh, using the Phillips or the uh, Posi Drive screws. Well, just a little bit more secure, a little bit easier to tighten and undo a much more desirable product in the end so we're just going to screw all of these in place uh, Socks is saying how to take things too seriously it's 101 uh, it should make a true gasket mount. Um, just remember, Pluto, if it's going to be a true gasket mount, if it's the definition of a gasket, it has to seal something, so let's go for that. 
Uh, sounds good. Will be handy for others wanting to design their own cases and boards. Is key? Yeah, we we, we want to sit down, get a couple of designers on, a couple of people who are designing boards. People like Tesla Tron, uh, Dixie Mech, uh, potentially Quantrix, something like that, uh, as well as mine and Brian's experiences, and just talk about all the different mount points, their positives, their weaknesses, uh, what they can be used for, how you can tweak or change them for different uh, bits and pieces. So yeah, so lots of uh, lots of different things to talk about. Uh, what else are we talking about? I think we use Centrac cases are integrated plate. Yeah, integrated plates and, and another thing as well uh, that we can talk about. Um, a stock is passing pictures. Would it be possible to mount a plate PCB with magnets? Um, yes, it is. It, it's there's, there has been one board that's done it that's mounted the case together, so it's held the both sides of the case together, but didn't support the plate. Um, but it held the case together with magnets. There is a board in development at the moment that actually mounts the plate, so it floats between magnets. Uh, and that's all I'm saying at the moment, but it is on its way. Um, magnets in switches have been around for years, yes, but not in holding plates in position. Would magnets near electronics be even worth it? For the types of power you're talking from the magnets, it's not going to affect them. Um, top crack, black or grey blue? Grey blue, definitely. Uh, true gasket could be a full brainstorm. Uh, yeah, it could be. It might be something we do as a bit of a fun thing on the 24 hour stream. A full on suspension mount, think of a trampoline. Uh, again, there is a board in development that might be doing something similar to that. Um, how does one order from Fax? Does he have a website? Not yet, but he's in the process of developing one. If you go onto Discord and you just type uh, in the top crack of Discord and you just type at Fax, you should be able to find him. If not, PM me and I'll put you in touch with him. Uh, spring mount board, absolutely. Um, gravity in the weight of the plates, which is it? Yeah, yeah, it's a thing, but there's someone trying to do it, so there we go. Uh, magnet bound sounds just about as awful as I can imagine. Um, struggling to imagine something worse. Stocks, you being happy for a change would be something worse than worse than that, man. Uh, mud mount says Gia. Um, yeah, mud mount. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure that's uh, that's anything that's viable right now. Although potentially you could do like a, a, a mud clay keyboard case, that would be interesting. So I'm just going to screw these final two stabilizers in. <laughs> oh, it's easy to think of word worse. Yeah, custard mount. Yeah, um, uh, Des ZDV as well. Hello, welcome to the stream. There may also be some uh, more things happening on the uh, on the 24 hour stream. If I can wangle it, there might be some uh, purple track giveaways, things like that. So we'll see. Tell me who thought of this magnet levitation thing, so I can find them and sort them out. Go speak to Brian; he knows uh, he knows all about it. So that's the PCB put together. We've got our stabilizers in place. They're all clipped, lubed, and flush with the board. So as you can see there, and uh, they're flush. Um, too many shadows on my setup. So we go nice and easy. What we're going to do now is we're going to build a board with Arctos switches, uh, and then we'll try these out. We'll see how they sound, see how they feel. Uh, these switches are uh, polycarbonate housings, uh, standard POM stems. They come with rose gold springs, believe it or not. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that on the camera uh, if it focuses. But the springs on the inside are rose gold. Yeah, it's not going to really show you guys a good view. Um, they come pre-lubed from uh, the manufacturer um, they don't sound the best out in my hand uh, and they feel scratchy still uh, let me pause the music see if you guys can hear this see if you guys can hear this and then we'll just try Helio that is lubed at the side of it for the sound preference so I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but they are really quite uh, scratchy. scratchy. Uh, yeah, Pluto, we're going to build with Arctos first, then we're going to build with the Helios afterwards, and then I'm going to use it with Helios in for a week or so. Uh, in terms of a plate, I am going to get a better plate pre uh, made for this, but we're just going to use a cheap Alu one that I found in a drawer uh, that happens to support the layout we're going for. Uh, and with this being a hot swap board, it's dead simple. Pop the switch into the plate, just like so. Push it into the, uh, into the board. You can see here that I'm lining up the switch and then just pop it in and that's that switch installed. We're just going to replicate that uh, in a few places to get the board 
uh, all lined up. So again, there you go. You see that the keyboard uh, plate and PCB are separate from each other. So we're just going to do that a few places around the board, make sure it's all nice and separate and stand, standing proud of each other. And then once we've done that, we'll just go around and we'll plumb the rest of the switches in. Okay, so that's fairly sturdy, it's going to hold together now, so we can just go around quite easily and just pop the switches in. You can always just double check by looking down the angle, making sure that your switches are going in, just like that. Making sure that you're not bending any pins. Uh, but very quickly you'll get a feel for popping these together. We're just going to keep on going until they're all in. No soldering today because this is a hot swap board so you guys don't have to see me breathing in solder fumes. If you find any that have a bit of resistance just double check you're not bending a pin. Don't over force them, it's easier to uh, fix a bent pin than it is to desolder but you don't want to have to fix them if you don't have to. Um, as I said these are 67 gram uh, Arctos switches, uh, they were provided for free by Arctos for this review. Um, they sent some for me and some for Brian, so Brian should have his in the next few days um, as I only shipped them to him last week. Uh, my ball sack has more rose gold than that spring. Um, they are rose gold when you look at them and take them apart. I, I, I will vouch for it. Uh, thoughts on Arctos versus MX Clear and Utamu Sky? Seems like that kind of market. Uh, it, you're probably right, actually, uh, that hand thing. They're probably very similar. It's different from Azelio, you're absolutely right. They are. They do feel very, very similar to uh, Utamu Skies, which I've used before. I used them in the KBD67 build. Um, so we'll try those out soon. Uh, once we've built this board up, we'll put some keycaps on it, those keycaps. We'll test it out, we'll see how it works. Um, and then I'll let you know how it compares to uh, to Utamu Skies. MX Clears, uh, I think, are very different. I think they, they whilst they fit into a similar sort of price market, they are a very different switch. Uh, Rose Gold equals more sales. Uh, yeah, you just get a livery on board straight away simple as that. Uh, why not platelets to show the flex? Um, two reasons. One, I don't want too much flex in a board. I like to have a little bit of rigidity. Um, and two, most people are going to build with a plate, uh, especially if they go normal 60%. Um, and it's just to replicate that from a sound perspective. Platelet sounds very different to a plated build. So, yeah. Uh, what kit do you need to buy for building a custom keyboard? Uh, there's all sorts of um, uh, different keyboards. You need to decide on a size and the layout. Uh, once you've decided on a size and a layout that you want, um, you can then find kits of that size. Um, and then you can either get a hot swap variant like this, where the switches just push in, or you can get one where you can solder it together. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of different options there. Um, <clears throat> if you want more information or advice, there's if you have Discord, you can join the Top Clack Discord where we can talk about it in a bit more detail. Uh, there's a couple of thousand people in that Discord that are all willing to help and talk and chat through different options, builds, give their thoughts and opinions. Uh, so feel free to do that. Someone, I'm sure, will be kind enough to post a Discord link to our, our Discord in the chat for me. Uh, Utumu Skies are pretty scratchy, yes, and so are these, uh, but it's only fair for me to give a review after I've typed on them for a minute, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, as far as traditional tactility goes, do I prefer V1 Zelios or Ergo Clears? Uh, Ergo Clears out of, uh, out of those two. Um, the reason for that is because I prefer the sound of Ergo Clears of, of Zelios. Um, I think they just sound nice and they're highly tactile as well. Uh, what kind of switches do you guys like for a half plate? Think about going for a half plate on the Zeno. If you're going for a half plate on the Zeno, two things. Use the Zeal affiliate link for top clack, and also I would recommend a linear switch rather than a tactile one. Um, that's just my experience of uh, of half plate builds. I think they fit uh, a linear better than they do a tactile or a clicky switch. Uh, 
Okay, we're almost there with putting these switches in. So this is probably the fastest build I've ever done. Okay. You can all make your jokes about ISO. Now I've put the ISO ENSA switch in as well. Feel free to uh, let me know your thoughts on that one. Ah, uh, there we go. Um, a couple of people have posted the links to the Top Clack Discord. Thank you very much for that, guys. Uh, it was leaning towards the Helios anyway. Uh, for silence, which is yes. Uh, I will give you my thoughts on Helios in just a bit. I've had a bit of a play around with them. Uh, I haven't had them in a board as yet. Um, as soon as we've tried the Arctis out, though, we'll be removing these switches and doing exactly the same build with the Helios. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about how they feel when we do that. Okay, almost there now on this particular build. Uh, then we'll pop the board in the tray, we'll pop some keycaps on, and then we'll give it a little bit of a sound typing test. Once we've done that, we'll take a break, uh, we'll take these switches out, we'll rebuild it with the Helios, and then we'll do the same and talk about the switches as well, and see what we think. Uh, Helios are pretty damn nice. Sad I don't have an extra PCB to put mine in. Um, yeah, I, from what I've tried, they feel okay. They feel really nice. Um, I'm not really a fan of silence switches usually, so it is going to be a bit of a learning curve for me. Okay, so they're all in. You can see that we are all flush on all four sides. All the switches have clipped into the plate. They've all clipped into the PCB nicely. We don't have any bent pins as far as I can tell. So what we're going to do now is screw this into the case. And then once this is screwed into the case, we'll pop the keycaps on. And then we'll give it a sound test and see what we think. Uh, I bought some 67 gram Utimu Skies from my KBD 6075 build and they sounded so cheap and pingy that you end up getting a different switch. That's fair, yeah, they do sound better with lube, but I'm still not a fan of the Utimu Skies. I do have uh, another set of switches that I'll be trying out on this board at some point soon, which are the new Heisenberg switches, so these are the silent Utimus. Um I haven't really played with them yet, but we'll get them on stream in a couple of weeks, we'll give them a try. Probably in this board. Okay, last mounting point screw to go in now. Okay, there we go. All put together. There we go. I'm not sure if it'll be able to show you the flex now in this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Yeah, it doesn't really show, but it is there. Yeah, it's not really easy to show you. It's only a couple of millimeters, but it does make a difference when you're typing. Okay, so we'll pop the keys on that we can, that we took off of the, uh, the ANSI layout build here. I think that's it, yeah, that's it. Um, we've got some ISO specific keys to the side all pre-prepared. So we'll pop these on nice. Uh, nice and easily. Pop the space bar in. Uh, so it is a slightly different layout. Pop the ISO enter in. I'm not sure why we wanted that one. We want that grey one, that's better. There we go. Uh, the shift. Oh, do you know what? We never put the stabilizer in for the shift. Oh, well, we'll do it later on. Uh, we'll do that later on. How silly of me. No one quite to be there. I'll pop these keys on. So as you can see, this is a different layout to the previous board that we were using. All together now. As you can see, this is for the ISO layer, so it has the UK ISO keys as well. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then we'll just take these keys from here over. 
uh, more we're doing this, we'll just catch up with what people are saying, what people are talking about. Um, oh, Talisman Solutions with the 1,111 bits. Man, you are a legend, a lifesaver, a hero. You're one of the guys that keeps the channel going. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate those bits. Um, Stocks isn't going to buy any. He just wants silent switches to take the only way. Uh, take away the only thing about switch I actually like the bottom out sound. Uh, that's fair. Yep. Yeah. Um, One point two dollars each is too expensive, and we shouldn't encourage it. It is expensive for switches. I agree. Um, if they're worth it, I think that's within the realms of possibility for a price. Um, I think they should be cheaper if possible. Uh, Pluto says a bit off topic, but have you been faring working from home on these Fridays after the first couple of episodes of TC? Uh, well, I hope. Uh, yeah, it's been fine. So the last couple of Fridays, I've had both Fridays off. One is holiday, uh, and this last Friday was my non-working day. So next Friday will be the one where I've actually had to work after doing a full day on, uh, after doing a full show on TC. Um, so save that for next week's stream uh, and ask me then. Oh, we've got Met Advice Guy in as well on his correct account this week. Um, so, welcome, dude. Uh, he sent me something nice that should be on stream next week, actually. Uh, some nice new PCBs, which we'll talk about on the Top Clock Show when they arrive. Uh, Talisman at it again. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a legend with those bits, man. Uh, we've got Ham Kenobi as well. Hey, man, good to see you, dude. Uh, rip 159 good try though good tries you know it has just gone yet um. stocks isn't gonna buy a Zeno I don't think uh, b-ball uh, I can't see that happening uh, amazing keycaps this is a keycap set called GMK Sky Dolch uh, it has multiple variants uh, it's one of the few sets that has a row zero bottom row as well option which is the one that's on here uh, slightly different sculpt Um, what else are we talk about? Anarchy says, "Look, I thought it was missing. It was missing the right shift, but I could not see because of the black PC. If it was missing, yeah, it's just me being silly. I miscounted earlier on and didn't even think. We'll fix it when we take it apart for the Helios build. Uh, it's one key. We'll be all right for for just now. Um, uh, just ordered my key called Brass Sixty. Uh, wasn't it the Sixty Five that was up today, Tronics? I thought it was a Sixty Five sale that was up today. Um, I was going to go for one and decided this morning that." I shouldn't really, so I didn't bother. Uh, Beadlock says, did that 666 Alice even sell or is it sell a price shopping? Uh, to be honest, that is cheap. Um, so my view is that that will have sold. Uh, they have been up, upwards of 900. Um, so yeah. I'd be surprised if that hasn't sold. Um, you were faster than expected, says so Soran. Uh, I'm not Quirdenker, so... Um, I won't be too slow. Uh, if you buy a $460 keyboard, you can get for 86 and six cents each. Thanks, Azeal. Um, yeah, that's fair. They are expensive switches. Uh, you know, uh, I'll be honest, I buy all my switches from Zeal, so my Zealio V2s that are in here are all bought and paid for, and I do like them. They're really good, probably my favorite tactile switches at the moment. I just wish they had a little bit of a better sound. Um, but yeah, that's a, a small thing. Oh, and Talisman Solutions has gifted uh, a tier one sub to Dez as well. There you go. Thank you, Talisman, and well done, Dev. There you go. Thank you. Really appreciate that, dude. I just realised I put this keycap in on the wrong place as well. Doesn't matter. We can change it when we do the, the final build. Uh, B looks. I bought about 120 switches, and if I wait till after the group buy pricing, it would be uh, $39 more. Yeah, they're expensive. Uh, 159 says the PayPal API was too slow. I was in in under 10 seconds. Man, it's sad, but there's only five boards, so uh, you know. Um, uh, Dixie as well saying I appreciate the muted without accents. Glad to see someone else sporting that look. Yeah, the only accent on the board is the uh, is the artisan the jelly key in the top corner. Uh, just to give it a little pop of colour, uh, otherwise it's just a little bit too monotone for me. Uh, and Thara, Thara B B C, um, I, I don't know how to say. I'm just going to call it Thara. But Thara, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime scrub sub. I really appreciate that, man. Uh, that's fantastic, uh, and thank you for supporting the community. 
Uh, Plus says zeal switch and board prices are totally worth it with how much he's bought to the community search I have zero problem throwing money at him uh, again that's a fair comment Pluto I think I agree from a board perspective my Zephyr which will build it on the stream in a couple of weeks um, the quality on that is outstanding it's absolutely fantastic um, it feels good it looks good and the piano is amazing quality the machining is unbelievable uh, I think it was worth every penny of what I paid for it which was significantly undergrouped by price because I got a great deal on it from a friend um, so thank you uh, Jacques if you're watching thank you I spent my whole Saturday getting PETG uh, to stick to my build plate and printing the part, the top part of the keyboard case it takes a long time to do well I'm glad you've got the 3D print build working man that's really good to hear okay so there we go that's the board built uh, and all put together. We have missed the stabiliser, we'll come back and fix that on the next build. So let me just mute the TV again. Um, so this is Arctos switches uh, in the Noxry T60 with a GMK keycap set, which is GMK uh, Sky Dolch, uh, with an aluminium 1.5mm plate. So let's see how this one sounds compared to the last one. Um, I'll be honest, so the first thoughts after 30 seconds with the actor switch is they feel scratchy. Um, they say they're lubed, but they feel scratchy all the way down the press. Um, the tactility isn't great, they don't feel as tactile as Zelio V1s did. They're slightly less tactile than that. Uh, these are 78 gram version. Um, there's a lot of spring ping I can hear as well. For a lubed spring, that sounds a little bit off to my ears. Just for reference, um, if we use the same key, I know it's a different board, but this is a Zelio V2. Um, so they're very scratchy, the bump's different. Uh, it's not a big bump on these, it feels really small. Uh, it feels more on the upstroke than it does on the downstroke. Um, I'd say the lube job is poor, they don't feel nice from a lube perspective um, and I don't think they sound particularly good. Uh, let me see what you guys think to the sound. Um, all the cool kids join the Zeno group by, that's true. Uh, buy a profit when it comes out. Uh, yeah, profit looks good or a J01. Yeah. Uh, PC Zinger in the Zeno, I have a PC Zinger on the wall just here, that's my Polycarp Zinger just there. What switches are these? These are Arctos switches, Dixie. Um, I'm not uh, a fan, if I'm honest. They sound scratchy, um, but they are cheap. They are tactile. They're not terrible switches. I don't think they're bad as such. I just think there are better options if you want to spend a bit more money. Um, I don't think they sound like Zeal's stocks. They sound very different. So if Zeal's versus these. I don't know how much the, uh, the, the microphone picks up, but there's a very big difference uh, in the sound quality between the two to me. Um, Compared to lubed MX clears, I think I picked lubed MX clears over these. These feel a lot scratchier, less tactile. I'm not sure I'm keen on the sound. Um, yeah, I don't think these are bad switches. I'm just not sure that they're good switches. Uh, yeah, Max has some great stuff coming through, so and so. Yeah, uh, don't. I don't mind you posting those on here. Um, so Max, who run the ANSI group buy and also make my cables, he's got a couple of group buys coming up for profit and a couple of other boards as well. You guys should definitely check them out. Uh, Talisman says the Vern prototype looks amazing. Thanks, man. Uh, I hope you've seen the uh, the pictures that I've posted pretty much everywhere on Reddit and um, Instagram and all of that kind of place. Um, but they do look great. The Vern is fantastic. It's one of my favourite boards. If I could get it to be ISO, it would be perfect, and it would probably become my permanent daily driver at home. Um, that's how much I'm in love with that board right now. Um, I'm, I'm even using it, even though it's ANSI only. Um, so yeah, we've got, I don't know what you guys think to the sound, but I'm not happy with the sound of these. Um, I, I think they sound scratchy as well as feel scratchy. Um, yeah, that's just the way it is. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Okay, so, um, just take a drink before we carry on. Uh, 
Uh, Dixie says they sound very hollow compared to the Zelvia 2. Yep, and I do agree that that hand thing, they do sound like Utama ISV2. They actually feel very similar to Utama ISV2, the Smurfy switches as well. Um, the uh, What did he call them in the end? The, uh, the Sky switches, that's what they sound like and feel like actually. It feels scratchy, and these are pre lubed switches, so I, I, I don't think they're particularly good. Okay, but that answers that one. Um, that gives a demonstration of the Arctos switches uh, and how we build on a, uh, um, a hot swap board. What I'm going to show you now, guys, is how easy it is to change your mind and change these switches after the fact. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to take all of these keycaps off. We're going to rebuild the board. We're going to take these switches out. And then we're going to pop the Helio switches in. And then we'll try that. See what that sounds like. See how silent they are. See how quiet they actually are. Uh, see how smooth they are. What it feels like. And we'll go from there. Uh, it seems like with ZL V2 switches out, a lot of the Franken switches are a bit over. Um, I think that's fair. One of the other interesting switches that come, that's coming up is uh, Way from Keyboard Fans. He's got his new switch, the T1, which I've dubbed the Holy Way uh, because it's a Holy Panda clone. Um, he's trying to do that. We should have some prototypes of that switch uh, available on the next Top Clack stream. He's sent some to me. They are on the way at the moment. Um, so hopefully they'll, be, they'll arrive before the next stream takes place. Um, I really hope they do. Um, but they do go on sale in a couple of days, uh, and the group bar will run until all 10,000 are sold. I'm definitely going to grab some, as well as the uh, um, the test samples that he's sending as well, um, purely because I'm interested to see how they feel. I love a good tactile switch. Uh, and there's still the packer. Yes, there's still the packer, um, which will come to fruition a little bit more frequently when creams ship. Uh, so for those that don't know, the Paco switch that Starson is mentioning is a Holy Panda stem uh, in a uh, Mike from Novel Keys cream switch. Um, so you take a cream switch, you put a Holy Panda stem in it, uh, and that creates a Paco switch. I'm not convinced by them, and they're not as good as what some people have made out. Uh, in my opinion, um, they, they do feel tactile, but they only feel tactile in the version one of the cream switches. On the first revision, uh, which is the revision that's made it to production, they feel significantly less tactile. Um, so let's see how that goes, but my view is that they're probably not going to take off on Paco switches. Uh, Stock, yes, you did hear creams. Um, so even in spite of all your memes, all the uh, the negativity you have towards me and my stream stocks, um, yes, you will still get them. Uh, Cthulhu, yeah, I'm still waiting for mine as well. Mike's promised me some. Um, I can't wait to get hold of a full board's worth. I have got some V1s and a single V2 cream switch. Um, I have tried a full board of them at Chris Wise's house. Uh, he's got a QXP with them in, uh, which I think he's actually sent on to Tidal now. Um, I don't know if you've tried that yet, Tidal, if you're still watching, uh, Josh, but if you have, let me know. So once we've got through taking these switches off, we'll just unscrew the PCB and the plate from the uh, from the board. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Negative, that's what I'm going to call you, Stocks. Mr. Negative. You should be happy, man. You recently got engaged. You're a lucky boy. Pluto wants his creams as well. Yeah, I'm waiting for mine. I can't wait to get a full board's worth. In fact, let's have some music again while we... Uh, Carry on. Uh, Met Advice Guy says, I'm getting into the linear game and have purchased some Gat Yellow switches. Any other switches I'd recommend? Um, I like Retail Blacks. They're a good standard switch for most builds. Absolutely fantastic switch. Um, I also like Tangerines, um, which I've got two full bags of here ready for builds that are upcoming. Um, there's the new face switches as well. I'm not sure if you've joined, but I think I saw your name on the, uh, the odd form actually for face switches. Um, but they should feel identical to tangerines because they're basically the same. They're just a different colour, um, so that's all preference based. <coughs> uh, yep, yeah, Stocks got engaged a little while ago, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, so congratulations to him. Um, he's got engaged to a wonderful young lady um, who. He's batting at, let me on. He's batting above his average by, uh, by day, so he's a, he's a lucky man. He's a lucky man. 
Worst mistake he ever made. No. It's uh, it's only just over a year since I got engaged, and only just over seven months since I got married. So there we go. Uh, and that was the best thing I ever did. And he's already got some retail blacks. Good man. Good man. Yeah, I've got some. Um, what have I got here? So I've got some retail blacks to build with. I've got some tangerines. Two boxes of tangerines. Uh, and that's about it. I've got some other switches on there as well, but they're the only uh, linear ones. Okay, so that's the board stripped down again. What we're going to do now is we're just going to take out the two screws that hold this in place. That's one and two. And then we're going to move to the two screws on the other side that hold this in place. Lift this out. Try and keep the screws together. There we go. Just move these to one side. Oops, apologies for hitting the mic there. Probably deafened you all. I do apologize. Okay, so I'm just going to move this build to one side. Before I forget, let's just grab another stabilizer as well. Need to make sure I get screw and stabilizers out of the bag. I'm sure I've got some more screw and stabilizers somewhere. All these cherry stabilizers, and I bet they're all clipping, aren't they? They're all clipping, I think. Oh no, there we go, we've got one that's pre-built. Screw it. There we go. This one's pre-built but unlooped. So that's perfect for what we need. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're just going to get a switch puller. Uh, I should have one to hand. And we're just going to literally pop all these switches out. Um, so that's it. They just come straight out like that. So just to show you up close, guys, all you want to do is get the standard IC puller in on both sides of the switch, and then just pull straight up, and out they come. So we're just going to replicate that across the board, taking these out. And it's as simple as this. and then we'll put the Helios in. So we'll probably, what we'll probably do is take them all out first, add the additional stabilizer into place, um, and then we'll put the switches in for the Helios, pop the caps back on, and then we'll test from there. So unlike a full build, if you did want to use a hot swap board, this is just how easy it is to change your switches. Dead easy. Uh, let's just catch up with chat, um, see what's going on. Everyone's congratulating uh, Stocks. Yeah, uh, as my advice guy says, she's a lovely woman. Um, I won't embarrass her any more than that. Uh, retail back is pretty good. I got a few from a recent batch though, uh, because as far as I could tell, they're getting pretty scratchy. Um, best polish ass. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about, Pingu, but I'll let you on with that. Um, Quick and easy in buying gap blacks and using cherry tops. Um, that's maybe fair. I think if you go for Vince instead, maybe I'd probably do that. ASMR, always. Uh, Pingu is stalking. Pingu's always stalking. He's always around. He's waiting for his uh, 60 XT prototype to be on the stream, which will be a couple of weeks away yet. 
Uh, da, 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 da. What was we talking about? Which says top clank. Do you prefer any lube on your Helios? So this is the first time I've used Helios. What I've done is to help my comparison of them. I've lubed them exactly where I would any other linear, which is 104 on the housings and 106 on the spring. It's a stock spring. I've not spring swapped to these, which is the first time I've not spring swapped a switch that I've intended to use for a long time. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll give you my opinions on the switches once we've got them in this board and tried them out. Uh, IC puller, yeah, switch puller, IC puller, yeah, that's what it is. As I say, these all just come out nice and easily. Pull them straight out. Um, yeah, I have 200 pre retooled tops. I just already talked about his switch collection there. Uh, could never identify what causes pre retooled uh, black scratch sounds. I think it's just a case of the moulds. The moulds have micro abrasions on them, uh, and you can feel and hear them uh, over, uh, over the old ones. Um, Jay, he meant the AS4X, which is the Oh, I see. Yes, the. Yes, I remember. The, the Asboard. Yes, I remember. Uh, delayed by Chinese New Year. Well, I'm still in Soran, so just let me know when I need to throw money at you. Uh, worst part is lube doesn't even fix it. Um, yeah, it's probably true because I think it's just the housings that have gone like that. Uh, what springs do I usually swap in? I usually use sprit springs. Uh, so I'll show you guys. Um, so I have a bit of a sprit spring collection. Um, they've all fallen over in the drawer. Um, but effectively, I have one side which is all MX. Um, so I have dozens and dozens of different weights of MX springs. Um, yeah, all in there. Uh, I think I got up to 180 grams or something. Uh, yeah, I've got a full pack of 180 grams which I'll build at some point. Um, I've got some Cat Weeby springs uh, which are good. And then on this side, I've got a load of Alps springs and Kale Box springs and multiple bits and pieces like that. Um, so usually I go for spritz springs, I think they're probably the best on the market. Um, there's a lot of talk about Sprit being a scammer and all of that kind of stuff, I've never had a problem with him and it was before my time in the keyboard community. Uh, worst part is Lube doesn't even fix it. Uh, what springs do you usually swap in? Oh, I've talked about that. How can Jay now be unbiased seeing that he's sponsored by Zeal? Okay, right, I'm going to pause for a minute because this is really important. So. Zeal is one of the sponsors of Top Clack, and I work for Top Clack. Absolutely. Um, just because Zeal works for Top Clack does not mean to say I will shield his products or anything else, uh, apart from in the sponsor segment where we give them um, a segment on the main show to talk about uh, everything that they tell, and that's about it. In terms of their products that we review on stream and everything else, we will be 100% honest. If I didn't like something, I would be straight up and say it. I'll be honest about two things right now that I dislike. I don't like Zeal's pricing for loop on his site, and I think that his stabilizers are overpriced as well, uh, especially given that EPBT are using his molds or something similar uh, to produce their own. So I don't have a problem with saying those facts. I'd say them to Zeal. Zeal's not got a problem with me saying them. That's my opinion. Um, so just because he's part of the the, the top clack brand in terms of his sponsorship and all that kind of stuff doesn't stop me being open and honest about anything that he sells it, anything that I tell you about them other than the facts they're my thoughts and opinions only and they'll be completely open and honest and that's all I can say that's as fair as I can be um, I'm not going to be you know biased towards Zeal just because he's a, uh, one of our sponsors same goes for Novel Keys, Everyone's here, all of the other guys yeah we might talk about what they sell uh, but all of that will do is go on fact best selling will tell you exactly what they are because they're sponsors and in terms of uh, any thoughts and feelings and opinions they will be completely and utterly my own I won't be scripted they won't be I won't be told what to say or anything like that it will be completely my opinion and if I dislike something I'm gonna say it simple as that okay so there we go that's the uh, that's that's how I feel about it. I know you're probably only joking, Met Advice Guy, but it's really important that we have these frank and open discussions and people believe they can trust us because that's why we want to give opinions, because we want people to trust and understand and we want to be as open and honest about that as we can. Um so there we go. There we go. I don't want to get negative or anything else, but 
that's just the uh, that's just the same way. Um, I used to think the same way until I read the Geek Hack thread. Um, yeah, it was before my time. I joined the community uh, and bought stuff from Sprit before I knew of his history. I have read the Top Hack thread since. Um, he's been nothing but a gentleman when I've asked him about those times and things like that in emails. He's been open and honest with me. He said he regrets doing things. He wishes he could fix things. He doesn't know. He doesn't have a list right now of all of the people that he he um, uh, you know shortchanged or, or scammed or whatever you want to call it. Um, and therefore he's unable to put things right because if he just gave money to everyone, then it, you know everyone would put in a claim. You know you'd have thousands of people. And how do you verify that they are a customer if you don't have an original customer list? Whilst it's not ideal, whilst it's not great, he seems to have reformed. I'm a man that's all about giving second chances. Um, this is his for me. If there's anything else untowards within the community, then you know I'm happy to stand up and say that I won't use him again if, if he does pull another scam. But I'm all about reformation and giving people a second chance. Um, in terms of moving forward, I'm going to still buy Sprit Springs. Selfishly, they are the best products on the market and I want the best keyboards I can have. So that's where I stand on that right now. Um, let's just catch up with chat, waiting for the rest of the monies. Uh, on stream, I'd say I like you. <laughs> well done, Stocks. Oh, look at the face, how can you not trust you? Uh, honest, you know, it's. I, I will be honest on stream. That's all I'll ever be, and that's all I promise to be. Um, you can be honest and still chill. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I will. He has his vendor slot where we will talk about everything that he sells. But in terms of shilling a product, in terms of talking about a product, and the definition of shill is me saying that it's my favourite. I approve it. All of those kinds of things. I'll be completely open and honest about that. If I dislike something, I'll say it. If I do like something, I'll say it. You know, and any opinion you give or that you hear me give on stream will be genuinely my opinion um, and it's not going to be coerced or informed by anyone else it's just going to be my sole opinion <clears throat> uh, Zeal making some dollar though he does probably make some good money yeah uh, TLDR, TLDR about Sprit. Um, he ran a couple of group buys that were successful. He ran a group buy that he didn't fulfil. Uh, he didn't refund everyone's money. He has refunded some people, but not everyone. Um, he disappeared for a while. He came back, and since he's come back, he's been, uh, you know, an, an upstanding member of the community. That's the long and the short of it. Um, yeah, he's been really good as of late. Yeah. And his springs are really, really good. Um, there's some other vendors that are now starting to pick them up. Anyway, so we're just going to move back to the board really, really quickly. I'm going to just quickly update this stabilizer. It's already been pre clipped. I think it was one that I clipped out of a packet ready to build with and never actually built. Yep. So I'm just going to quickly lube these up. If you want to see how I did this, go back to the beginning of the board when it's up on YouTube and take a look at the other part of this video and you'll see how I did the rest of them. So I'm not going to talk through this, I'm just going to get it done quickly and smoothly. Okay, there we go. That's that one lubed up nicely, so we're just going to pop this in place for this shift. Uh, and as I say, when we built the board before we, we missed this. And we're just going to screw these in. When you're screwing these in, you want them to be tight enough so that you're tightening the screw, but you don't want to over tighten them uh, and pinch the board as such. Um, Remember to be delicate. I caught that one. Um, you don't want to damage the PCBs when you're doing this. Okay, there we go. So that's now all of the stabilizers in correctly. We'll get there in the end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild the board in exactly the same way as we did before, but this time we're going to build it with the Helios. Then we'll get to the end, we'll do another sound test, we'll get the keycaps on that, I'll give you my thoughts on the Helios, the same way I did the Arctos, and uh, and we'll go from there. We'll see how that, that goes for a stream. I'm just going to push some switches into the plate and into the PCB, uh, dotted around to support the plate 
first of all. So I'm just making sure that these clip in. Again, you can just see that the clip into the PCB nice and simply just slot in and push. They hold quite well. That's just two switches and it's already holding the plate on even when we're shaking it with no movement away. Uh, Sock says Sprit makes good stuff. He does indeed. Um, what's that very nice keep to your left and what's the artisan on the escape? So this is the Vern TKL. Um, it's a prototype made by Zambumon. He's going to run a group by later on this year. The artisan is just a little jelly key, uh, which is first man on the moon. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that closely, but it's effectively got a little US flag from when the moon landings took place. It's quite cute. Uh, Pluto's already put that in there as well, yeah. Vern prototype with a jelly key artisan. Absolutely. Um, did you put the other stab in, Jay? I did, yeah, the other stab's in place. Yes, thank you for checking. Uh, this board is Hot Swap Stotty Boy, yes. Um, and it's going to be my test bed board for switches going forward. Um, can't see with the black desk mat. There we go. Look, there you go. I'm going to change this and take this off and just use the white desk, I think, going forward. But you can see we've now got a stabilizer here, stabilizer here, stabilizer here, and stabilizer here for the space. There you go. All in. Okay. Uh, I like spritz acrylic cases. I had one. Do you not still have that stock? Because that was really good. And if I remember rightly, I had dibs on buying that off you if you wanted to sell it. So. Um, oh, we've got Zondat as well. Boo! Zondat, we've been talking about your Noxury T60. Uh, we've had it built up twice today. Uh, we've had it built up with uh, with your lovely 5mm uh, polycarb plate, um, which has still got some flex to it. It feels like 1.5mm LU in terms of feel. Sounds a little bit dead, in my opinion. Um, we tried it with actual switches on a 1.5mm LU plate. Sounded scratchy as hell because the switch is crap. Um, and now we're going to try it with Helios and see how we get on from there. But the board itself, as we discussed before, um, is lovely. It's really plain, tray mount, four point tray mount, Noxry logo on the inside. Well worth the price. Uh, Talisman Solution says it's nice to see that this week's Sunday build, now under Top Pack, has an increased Top Club subscriber ratio than your last Sunday build. I attribute that to your leadership and standing in the community. Thanks, Jane. Oh, that genuinely a lovely thing to say. Thank you, Talisman. I really appreciate that. Um, I think what it is is a lot of people that used to follow my streams have moved over, and I've seen quite a few people subscribing. Um, I don't expect anyone to do that, but it is really nice to see. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for that, guys. Uh, additionally, a lot of people that did follow my old stream subscribed on my first Top Clack show, uh, which I think probably skewed them a little bit, but yeah, it's good to see. Definitely good to see. Uh, best way to get from Sprit, Geek Hack, or is there a site? Uh, SpritDesigns.com, yeah, straight from his website. Um, I always go to him direct, drop him an email if I need something. He's always polite, courteous, conscientious. He's just a really nice guy. Uh, or he has been in all of my interactions with him. Uh, my advice guy is losing um, <laughs> uh, Alp Springs on his floor somewhere. Yeah, there we go. You want to pick those up, mate. <clears throat> uh, you had dibs. Um, yeah, we discussed this stocks when you won a prize at the UK meetup, and I said, if you ever sell this board, let me know. That was where I got dibs, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, Zonet says, ooh, nice. Five miller poly is nice and muted. Maybe that's why I like it. That, and it I, I'd say it's more of a dull note than a muted note. Muted to me means the notes the, the, the notes the same. It sounds the same. It's just quieter. Um, I think it dulls the sound of the switches, especially on the retail blacks that are in your book. But that could be because they're not lubed. Could be a multitude of things. Um, but yeah. Uh, Met Advice Guy says, I wanted to sub before you move to Top Clack, but wait till you move. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, when I was drunk out of my mind, that old chestnut. Oh, yeah, come up with any excuses. <clears throat> Get one from Sprit, Jay. I may do. I may do. Uh, Oof, them cases are nice. Yep, these are really nice. I got this from Zondat just before Christmas. We caught up for a nice coffee at a little coffee shop near mine. Uh, you may have seen the pictures on Instagram of that meetup. It was a good afternoon. We talked a lot about keyboards, a lot about manufacturing, all of that kind of good stuff. 
I'm just going to carry on filling this up with the Helios. And then once we're done, we'll pop it back in the board, pop the caps back on, give it a bit of a sound test, and talk about how I feel about these switches. One thing you can see though, this is how easy um, hot swap builds are. Very simple. Do it in an afternoon, take the old switches out, put the new switches in. Nice and simply done. <laughs> Jay has an Insta, let's go find it. Yeah, it's just keyboard related and some odd car pictures, it's nothing major. Um, when isn't Stocks drunk at events? Yes. So the last three meetups I've been to in the UK, Stocks has been at all, all of them. All three of those meetups, Stocks has been drunk. The last meetup, sadly, I couldn't make, but um, I wish I had. Um, I'll be honest, I've been drunk at all three of those meetups too, so I can't comment negatively on that. Okay. Making some good progress now, guys. Almost getting there. Seems to have got a few tags on this board while we've been on stream, but we'll catch up with those later. Uh, what is the point in going and not being drunk? Yeah, I get you. I get you. He's never been a bad influencer, guys. He never has. He's a, he's a good lad, really. Uh, can't wait for the next meetup. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the next meetup. Um, I'll be there with my top crack t-shirt on next meetup, more than likely. Imagine standing in a room of a bunch of sweaty nerds talking about keyboards without a drink. Yeah, that's fair. The meetups are good fun, though. It is nice to meet everyone and put faces to names and names to faces. It's usually really good. It's also a good opportunity and chance to see what boards other people have been building and working on and all of that kind of good stuff. I think that pin might be bent. Let's just take this switch out. Yeah. Bent pin. We'll sort that one out later. We'll come back to it. Almost there now guys, just a few more switches to go. I've got to be honest, it's nice not to have to solder on stream for a change. Oh, I've just had a Instagram notification. Stotty, you found my... Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but Stotty found my Instagram page. Well, there we go. <laughs> Uh, it's nice to touch the board, your board as well, Jay. Uh, thanks, man. I kind of appreciate that. Uh, next meetup, I'll be bringing the Burn, the VEA, and the Alice, and I think that's probably about it. Uh, I've inf influenced Matt Advice Guy a lot. He's even added a Nord UK kit to his uh, DSA milkshake purchase. Yep. Anarchy says, I wonder if because the London meetup uh, one is later this year, uh, there would not be a 0.5 one. Um, I'm not going to be running a meetup this year. Um, the plain fact is, is because the, the UK meetup uh, ran last February and last August, and I did one in between, um, there isn't going to be that gap this time because the UK meetup, the, the official one, isn't going to happen until April time, uh, purely because Matt's been busy and he's just been struggling to sort it out. Um, so given that, uh, there probably won't be a space for, for one of my meetups this year, um, but we'll probably do one in early 2020, about a year away. Okay, so there we go guys, that's the Helios uh, popped into here. We're going to pop the board back into the case. We're going to screw this down. Um, what we've got here then is a HS60 V2 with Helios switches, GMK stabs, a 1.5mm aluminium plate in a Noxery T60 with just four 
mount points as a tray mount system. The board's in a blue grey colour and we're going to be using GMK Sky Dolch keycaps. The switches are looped with uh, Crytox 104 and 106. 104 for the housings and 106 for the springs. Okay, there we go. That's the board all put together. Now we'll pop the keycaps on. Do the alphas in a second. <clears throat> Oh, I forgot the spare switch, did I? Yeah, Zeal's right. I forgot the spare switch. There we go. <coughs> space bars are overrated. Anyways, absolutely. There we go. We're just going to work our way through these keys, pop these back on. Um, if I get anything from PMK, do you have to pay import? In the UK, yes, you will have to pay import fees. You will have to pay customs fees if the order is over £130 uh, pounds in value, and that is the value of the order and shipping combined. If you uh, if you order any weight, you're going to have to pay VAT, which is 21% of the value uh, currently in the UK right now. Um, and that's on top of the customs fees if you get the customs fees. Uh, you'll also have to pay a small fee depending on who uh, uh, ships it. So you'll either have to pay eight pounds if it's uh, if it comes via Royal Mail, or you'll have to pay thirteen pounds if it's DHL or one of the other providers. Uh, did that just happen on purpose? <laughs> no, nothing scripted on this show. Uh, simple second build of the night, so it's easy to make a little mistake. Uh, if you said if you ask if you are sad there's not going to be a 0.5 meter, then a Copenhagen meter might interest you. I'm definitely going to try and get to that, um, but I'm also going to try and get to the uh, the US meetups this year. So I'm going to try and get to the Seattle meetup in the summer. Um, so that's definitely going to be on the cards if I can wangle that. The issue there is going to be uh, affording to do all of these meetups and still keep buying stuff that I want. So we'll see how we get on with that. <laughs> Always blue saying ISO. Whee! Yeah, it's ISO. Um, the previous board we looked at, which is the 5mm polycarb, this one is ANSI. Um, so we have had it as an ANSI build on, on stream. Um, so yeah, it's not just Okay, so and you can see we've got the Vern as anti as well with uh, the Z Zelio V2s. <clears throat> okay. okay, let's uh, finish off putting these caps on here. What else are we talking about? Uh, he's demonstrating how easy it is to put a switch into the HS60 clearly. Yeah, absolutely. finish popping these keycaps on and then we'll have a, a little bit of a typing test see how the helios feel how they sound Let's see if we can get these all in here fairly swiftly. Uh, ZXCVB, there we go. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, almost there guys, then we'll take a look at these switches and see how we think about these. So that's the board built back up together, all put back together. Um, still looking just as good as it did before. Um, and we'll do a sound typing test again. Let's just catch up with chat. So Copenhagen, yes, uh, it's, going, it's going to get worse in 2020. What's going to get worse in 2020? Um, Copenhagen meetup, absolutely rope. If you're going to go to that, I can't wait to see because I'll we'll try and get that my hardest. Um, I can hear that top clock money has gone to your head. Nah. I just want to get over to uh, to one of the US meetups because it'd be really good fun to do that. Uh, most likely going to be in September, slowly beginning to find a place that can host the event. Absolutely. Uh, only had £52 import to pay on GMK Space Cadet. Yay. Yeah, it's one of those things. Uh, Andy Holland, do I ever sell switch parts? No, if there's something I can't use, I just give it away because there's no point in selling it. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, VAT, yes. So there is a difference between VAT 159 and import. Import fees are only on things that are worth over £130, uh, which is British pounds, uh, and that's if they, uh, that's the combined price of what you paid for it in dollars converted to pounds and the shipping converted to pounds added together. Um, so he may well have had uh, import fees to pay on that as well as VAT. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just for the import Pluto. Yeah, it's one of those things. Um, so yeah, so we go. So as we discussed before, this is the Noxia T60 built with the HS60 V2 on a four-point mounting system from a tray mount. Um, in terms of the plate, we've got a 1.5 millimeter aluminium plate. We've got GMK keycaps, uh, and this is on uh, Helios switches. So these are silent linear switches. Um, so given how the board sounded before, uh, just for context, this is how Helios V2 sound right now. Let's give it a quick type and see how these feel once they've been lubed and how they sound. Okay, um, I'll be honest, they feel uh, very silent. Um, they do feel a little bit mushier than a normal switch does, but that's because of the way that they're silenced. Um, personally, they are better than uh, other silent switches, I think. Um, so having compared these to uh, MX silence um, uh, and Gatoron silence switches, I think these do feel better. They're very, very smooth. There's no scratch on them. Uh, they have been lubed though, so that might help. Uh, there's no scratch on them at all. They do feel softer on the bottom out, it's almost um, a mushy feeling but again I think that's just due to the way that the rubber is used. Um, personally I don't like them with the flex in the board, there is, and I know it's difficult to show you guys this, but there is noticeable flex when I'm typing on the board, the board is raising and lowering because it's only the 4 pound mounted system. Um, I'd suspect in a firmer board I would prefer these because they would feel a little bit softer on the bottom out but you'd have that firmness of a thick plate maybe, something like the Zephyr, which is what I ultimately intend to put them in. Um, index space by Master Race Seal, uh, just that's how all the best typists type. Uh, if you check Word and Chris Wise, myself, we all type that way. Um, so they do feel nice. Um, they are definitely smoother than any other um, silent linear. They're a little bit mushy on the bottom out, but that's just because of the way they feel. My open, honest, and frank opinion um, is that I think I would only like these in a thick uh, plate, so something that's really firm. Um, I'm not sure I like them in this, but I'll give them a week to try and get used to them before I put them in the Zephyr. Um, I think in terms of sound, they're very quiet. They, they achieve that, just for reference. And that's me really hammering on the key in normal use. So 
So yeah, they're really quiet, even on the space bar. Enter keys. So yeah, you go there. There you go. Um, so they, in terms of their um, their silence, they are really really silent. They're very quiet. Um, I think when I put them into the uh, uh, into the Zephyr, I'll much prefer them because the uh, the feel and the depth and the thickness of the plate, the firmness of the plate, will remove that mushy feeling from the bottom out. But you're going to get that with all silence switches anyway. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, they're not stock. They have been lubed with Crytox 104 on the housing and Crytox 106 on the spring. There is no crunch to the spring, as far as I can tell. There's no ping. Um, Yeah, there's no crunch or ping. Um, yep, yeah, uh, ISO returns. You're absolutely right. Let's show off what it looks like with the uh, uh, with the RGB in place. I forgot the USB cable the right way up. There you go. You can see that's the RGB uh, through there. You can hear it setting up the uh, the drivers for my keyboard in the background. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, in terms of VIA, we can show that off, um, I think. Let me just uh, minimize some screens and then we'll open up VIA. Uh, so this is going to go up right in the middle of the screen, I'm afraid, folks. Uh, let me just work that out. I think it's this one. Nope. Mm, nope. Hold on. We'll get that. There we go. This is my other screen. Um, so let me just load up uh, VIA. Uh, in fact, we'll have to unplug both boards to get this to work. Just give me a second. In fact, actually, I'll have to plug this back in to load it. Okay, so I'm going to pop this on the screen over here, try and make it a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Okay, so connecting a compatible keyboard, uh, so we should plug this in and it should work straight away in VIA. Hope if I can see. Uh, cable upside down again. So this is uh, VIA, so I've got it on the monitor at the side of me if it looks like I'm looking away. Oh. What happened there? What happened there? Let's just try that again. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's not liking this one. <laughs> It's not liking this. Let me just test that the keyboard actually uh, actually registers. Let me uh, get up switch here. Uh, okay, so the keyboard isn't typing either. Um, so it's plugged in. It's recognised. I think there's uh, the Vern is unplugged. The Vern's not plugged in. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm not quite sure what's causing this. Let me try a different cable. We have got another cable here. We can try it. one second, folks. Uh, in fact, that's not the right type of cable. Apologies about that, guys. We have got another cable that we can use here. Let's see if it recognizes it this time. Uh, let's catch up with chat. Uh, you get RGB LEDs to tweak the exact shade and hue you want. That's not achievable. Regular two pin LEDs. Correct. Yes. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this isn't working. This cable works as well. Oh, it's typing now. Okay, let's try relaunching VIA and see if that helps. Okay, there we go. There we go, guys. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Okay, so this is VIA. Um, this is the layout you can see. Now, because it's ISO, uh, it does have some inconsistencies. So you can see uh, where we've got the backspace uh, up on the screen uh, underneath it, the enter and everything else looks a little bit weird. Um, that's purely because the ISO enter image doesn't exist in the VIA database just yet, but uh, that's how the layout is. 
Uh, what's the application again? This is VIA, uh, flat telephone cable. Uh, yeah, it is a telephone cable. <laughs> that I've converted to USB or Max from Cable Car Designs did it for me. Um, in terms of how easy this is to program, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to get a switch hit program just underneath this. So I'm just going to move this up to the top uh, and then we're just going to load up switch here as well. Okay. So I'm going to pop this down here, make it a little bit. There we go. Uh, just flip it over to. Oh, I thought there was a 60% one. There isn't. Let's just leave it on there. So, in terms of the board itself, as it works today, um, I'll show you that everything's working. Um, so, escape's not, but that could be just the way the switch is. We'll have a look at it a bit. So, as you can see, everything's all working just fine. There we go. Uh, so we've got the layer keys here. Um, so as you can see, that's all plugged in and sorted. Um, 90% of stuff working. I need to have a look at the escape key, so we'll have a look at that later on. Uh, in terms of how we program it, uh, in fact, actually, you can see that the escape key isn't working because it's programmed incorrectly. So in terms of doing it, we select the key that we want, and then we select the function that we want it to have. And then if we just come back to the switch hitter, and you'll now see that the escape key is working. If I wanted to change that escape key, I tap on the escape key again change it to something completely different, so let's change it to the number 6, come back into switch hitter and let me just reload this, so now I'm going to press the same key and uh, it, oh, it's hitting numpad 6, hold on, there you go, you can see it's hitting number 6, uh, there we go, number 6. Again we want to change it back, we just click on VIA, click on the uh, key itself, click on the function we want, escape, back into switch hitter and without plugging in, unplugging the keyboard, without flashing anything, there we go. You can do the same for uh, basic controls, you've also got lighting controls, media controls, macro controls, layers and special. Uh, in terms of layers, it's just these controls at the top, you can just hit up and down and then you can see the different layers that we've got on this keyboard, so we've got two layers on here, all the other ones are unprogrammed. On layer one you can see that we've got all of the controls across the middle uh, of the Z row, those are ones for the underglow, um, and then you've also got the, uh, the lighting keys for the functions in there as well. Um, if you hover over the function, it tells you in the bottom of the window uh, what that function is. So you can see here, uh, H2DEC, uh, so uh, colour 2 is a hue, uh, so that's hue decrease. Uh, you've got hue increase, um, and you can see that that's how they all go through. So yeah, um, that's that's it. That's uh, that's QMK. Uh, sorry, that's VIA, which is the front end for QMK. Uh, it is definitely easier to use than anything else. Um, it doesn't have all of the functions just yet that VIA does, but it's getting there. It's slowly making its way across to that. Um, let's just minimise the display capture again. Uh, oops, multiple ones up here. Okay, let's see. Get rid of that. Uh, that one as well. There we go. Okay, so guys, so there you go. As you can see, that is the board built with Helios. Very quiet. Uh, VIA is based on QMK. Yes, it is a front end for QMK. I'm going to unplug this now because it's a little bit awkward to reach the cable across. It's a bit shorter. Uh, I'm not quite sure why this cable isn't working with it. You watch this time, it will. Ironically, ironically, it's just started all working again, so there we go. Um, okay, so there we go. So that's nice and easy to use. Um, yeah, simple. Let's just catch up with chat and see what's going on. What was the application again? Uh, it's VIA. Yes, it's a flat telephone cable. Where it's available, you can download VIA from the QMK repositories if you look at Olivia's forks. You can also get it straight from Rama's website as well. It's not... Um, available with all of the PCBs, there's only certain PCBs it's available with, so it is available on the Vern, it's available on the uh, HS60 V2, there's a couple of other boards out there, the Zeal 65's uh, got it as well, I think the Zeal 60's got VIA now as well, um, other than that there's just the Rama boards in there at present. Uh, Olivia did make it, um, how to get involved with the projects, I'm pretty handy with programming. Uh, if you hit up Olivia, Andy, I'm happy to introduce you if you want to, um, she'll be able to point you in the right direction or you'll be able to do your own coding and then uh, she'll be able to pull request it across. 
Uh, Zondat says, holy crap, I want VIA on all my boards. That's magical. Zondat, you need to get Rosakin to be able to program for it because it's really good. Or have a chat with Yankar about your PCBs because, yes, it's perfect. Uh, can you do caps for press and hold FN layer? You can't do all functions at the moment. One of the things that's missing is tap and hold. So what you're talking about there is if you press it, it would put turn caps lock on and off. And if you held it, it would then be an FN layer. You can't do that with VIA at the moment, but you can still do it with QMK. That's a feature that uh, they are they do have on the backlog. It's on the roadmap. It will be added to VIA at some point. Um, it's not based on QMK. It is QMK. It's just a GUI for it. Uh, I may have missed something, but what's the difference between between this to QMK configurator besides the snazzy interface? Uh, you don't need to flash it. Uh, it's literally it's there live. As soon as you make the change, it's there live on the board. With QMK configurator, you have to flash the board. You have to make a hex, and then flash the hex to the board. This does it directly, uh, literally, as part of the uh, as part of the GUI. You make the change on the screen, it makes a change to the board immediately. Uh, yeah, hat tip to Olivia, Wilbur and others, absolutely, it's really, really good, it's really awesome. If you guys want to see more, go check out the end of the Vern build where we did more programming on that, and go and check out Mech Merlin's uh, guide to using VIA, he does a whole board programming with it, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, would tell the ton with gaming and accidentally going into your layers, yeah, you'd be able to quickly change it and turn it on and off. Uh, another stream clap, uh, <laughs> I'm late, uh, yeah, this is the end of the stream gate one, but thank you for being here. Um, so it updates the layout live, or is it local? No, it updates it live, so you can take the board and unplug it, you can go plug it in elsewhere, and it will still work exactly as you program it. It live updates onto the MCU in the board. It's literally updating the board programming um, in line with what you're changing on screen. It's simple as that. Okay. So ISO Return says, uh, talk about you should convince the dev crew they should open uh, a donation page so we can su su support the devs and advanced features. That's a great shout, actually. Do you know what? That's a fantastic shout. Um, now, what I would say is it was uh, designed for Rama's boards in mind, and Rama did it for the M60A. That was the first board that he put onto VIA, and it was designed purely for him. So he... he as far as I'm aware, he funded the development of the program. How much time people donated, I don't know. In terms of its upkeep, though, absolutely, I think ISO returns you are spot on. We should uh, ask them to put up a page um, and, and be able to do some donations to the team. Even if it funds just a few team beers or a team meal or team coffees or something like that, it's absolutely worthwhile. Um, and I'll absolutely mention that to Olivia and see if we can get something set up. Okay, so there we are guys, that's uh, the end of the stream. Just to recap, we built the Noxra T60 twice, once with Arctos switches, which are tactile uh, pre-lubed stock switches. Um, they're still scratchy from, from stock, I'm not quite sure I'm a fan of them. Uh, the tactile bump is quite shallow, They're not. It, it's not like falling off a cliff with the ZL V2s, the bump isn't as good. Um, I think they're more akin to Utamu Skies, but I think they fit a certain part of the market, um, but it's not something I'll be using going forwards. In terms of the Helios, um, I think these are very, very smooth switches. They sound uh, very quiet. They do exactly the job they're supposed to do. Uh, in terms of the feel of them on this board, because this is a flexible design and the, the plate's designed to flex in the middle, um, I think that the, the rubbery feel of the bottom mount makes it feel more mushy on a flexible board. I wouldn't like them on something like a gasket mount board, like the GSKT, for example. But I think once I put them in the, in the Zephyr, the Zeal Zephyr, which has got a thick 5mm plate, that will remove a lot of that mushy feel and it will probably make the switches feel better. Uh, and again, they're nice and silent for an office. So if you need something quiet, these are probably my favourite quiet switches at the moment. Um, but they do have a couple of little uh, niggles about them, which we'll try and fix on the uh, on the Zephyr. Um, so that's my views on those. Uh, just having a quick look at chat again. Uh, Witzeller says, I'm headed out. Have a good one. Thanks so much for the stream, Jay. I'm really happy you joined Cop Top Pack. Keep up the great work. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, Breadlock says VIA just needs support on one basic PCB like the DZ60. That would make it insanely popular and easy for starters. HS60 V2, that's the one. This is where it's at. So the HHKB model, the ISO model, the ANSI model, they're all about to ship out soon. There was a ton of orders. I think four or five hundred of these PCBs were sold. That's the one that's going to win the bread on this and it's going to get people to convert them. Uh, in terms of existing PCBs, if it supports VIA, you can convert it. To, uh, sorry, if it supports QMK, you can convert it to VIA. So it's something I'll be working on trying to get some of my other boards on that. Um, yeah, we'll see how we get to. Uh, Helios sounds so nice. Uh, they're very quiet. They're absolutely quiet. Really quiet. Uh, Sinji, thanks for uh, thanks for coming. 
Uh, I appreciate having on stream. Uh, will the HS60 be constantly in stock? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Metboard who ran the original group buy for these uh, uh, and see how that goes. Um, uh, I would definitely get in touch with them and, and see what they think. Uh, Talisman, great job again. Thanks, Jay, for another great build stream. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And thank you for the bits and giving away the sub earlier on. I really appreciate that, man. Really appreciate that. Uh, in terms of next week, I'll see you guys on Top Clack on Thursday. Uh, so same time, same place as the usual Top Clack show. Uh, if you don't get a chance to see that, then I'll see you on the VODs afterwards. Um, but big shout out to everyone who does make it to the live show. Uh, and in terms of my build streams, there won't be one next Sunday because I've got something on and I'm not going to be able to build. But the Sunday after that, so two weeks from today, we're going to be building the Zephyron stream with these exact Helios. Um, and uh, we'll see how that build goes. And there might be some special caps that might be coming from glove caps for me for that build as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting that build completed um, and that's gonna be my new daily work board. That's the plan for the Zephyr. Um, so yeah, so we'll take it from there. Um, so with that, I'm gonna bid you all adieu. Thank you very much for watching the stream today, guys. I hope you found some of it useful, informative, and at the very least a little bit entertaining. Um, and I'll see you all again on Thursday. So cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Take care.